Today I'm going to show you how to install and play Genshin Impact as well as some benchmarks. So without further ado, let's uh, check it out. First of all, uh, in order to install this game, uh, you need to know that it's not natively supported on the Steam Deck. So we are going to have to do a little bit of a workaround to get it to work. So first of all, we're going to go to our desktop mode. All right, so we are now in desktop mode. So the first thing we're going to do now is go to the Discover App Store and go to search and search here port Proton and click on enter. Uh, make sure it's all together because uh, otherwise it's not going to show up. So yeah, uh, you're gonna you're just going to install this. Uh, you're going to download it and then after it's downloaded, you just click on launch. There are some situations where the Port Proton app won't show up on the Discover App Store. So I will have an alternative link on the description so you can run a script and install it from GitHub. All right, once we open Port Proton, we're going to be greeted by this uh, menu. So uh, this is showing up because I have Ubisoft Connect installed. So uh, just be aware that yours won't show Ubisoft Connect and it's probably just going to show up empty, right? So we're just going to go to Auto Installs and we are going to find Genshin Impact here. So it's all the way at the bottom. So now that we are here, we just click on that and it's going to start downloading the necessary requirements in order to be able to uh, play this game on the Steam Deck. All right, once it's finished downloading, it's going to prompt you with this window. So you're going to get uh, the install menu for Genshin Impact, basically. So you just click on, I have read and agreed to the terms of service and you just click install now and the game is going to start downloading. All right, once we are greeted by this menu, which will come up after the initial installation for the game is done, not before you actually download the game, but before the initial installation, all right? So uh, we're just gonna add it to desktop uh, because we're gonna add it manually to Steam later. Um, I found that the adding to shortcut to Steam library doesn't work all of the times with this app, so I'd just rather do it manually. So let's go ahead and create the shortcut. All right, after creating the shortcut, you'll be greeted by this other menu. So at this point, you just gotta click on, on the launch button and then it's going to start loading and it's going to open the program. At this point, we will start downloading the game. So leave the file path exactly as it is and just click on get game. Make sure you have enough hard drive space for this though. I have 82 gigabytes available, so that should be enough. At this point, it's going to start downloading. So I'm just gonna skip forward through this and see you in a second. All right, so the game has now installed and this is what the screen is gonna look like. So at this point, what we wanna do is just close up everything. And then we're gonna right click on the Genshin Impact uh, shortcut and then we're gonna add it to Steam. All right, after the game has been added to Steam, we can go to gaming mode. All right, once we are back on gaming mode, we can go to library, go to non-Steam, and then open Genshin Impact. So basically what we are doing now and the reason why we are opening from gaming mode is so that we have access to the controller. Um, this is going to just allow us to play using the normal uh, Steam Deck controllers instead of having to hook up something else like a keyboard or mouse etc so we're just gonna open it and click on play now this is gonna show up just click on launch so I would like to use this time to make a disclaimer uh, even though I have scoured reddit and other social media for posts about people getting banned for using um, the Steam Deck to play Genshin Impact. So far, I have not found any, but that doesn't mean you're off the hook. So please keep that in mind at, and proceed at your own risk. And yeah, just be aware that there is a possibility for you to get banned because this is not officially supported, okay? 
So with that out of the way, just let's click on launch and the game will open now. All right, now we can log in using our email and password. So after logging in, it's gonna ask me to put on my uh, security code. So I'm gonna do that. Click on next. Now we're going to agree to all of the terms. Select the server, I'm in Europe, so I'm just gonna select that and I'm gonna click on start game. Now it's going to start downloading some resources. Uh, so I'll see you in a second. All right, seems like we are now in game. So let's just start the game now. And we are now in game with our account. So uh, right now there is something else that we need to do and that is to add um, controller support for the game. So as you can see, the only thing that works is if I press it on the keyboard. So I'm gonna go to options and I'm gonna change the control type to keyboard, uh, sorry, to controller. And now I can just go back, return and leave and now I can use my my controller. So I'm using an Xbox controller, but you can also use the Steam controller as you can see here, and everything works perfectly. So right now the game is capped at 30 FPS, so let's play with the settings a little bit. All right, so we're now in options. Uh, the way it works, uh, unfortunately, is that we are stuck at 60 FPS. Uh, it does not allow me go past, to go past that, so... Uh, Unfortunately, we will have to play at 60 FPS. We won't be able to take advantage of the 90 FPS or the 90 Hertz screen, but that's fine. 60 FPS is fine. So I have set everything to the absolute minimum. Render resolution is set to 0 0.6. Everything is, everything is set to lowest and crowd density is set to low. And pretty much everything is just off. So let's go back, see how the game runs. So we are at a very stable 60 FPS and we are barely consuming a uh, battery. So let's uh, get into a little bit of combat. As we can see, uh, the frame rates are not dropping. Uh, we are uh, at a very steady 60 and we are very far away from consuming the maximum amount of water. So we're sitting around the 15 watts uh, right now. Uh, it's not increasing, so that'll give us around three hours and a half to four hours of battery life. And this is running at a very steady 60 FPS. So yeah, just uh, keep that in mind. All right, so let's try to turn it up to medium settings now. All right, so we are now um, on medium settings. The game is still running at 60 FPS, as you can see, with uh, a few frame drops here and there. Uh, I would say that this is perfectly playable. Let's uh, try to get into some combat. So, as we can see, we have gotten into some combat and we have not seen any sort of frame drops uh, other than the occasional dip to the high 50s. But to be honest, it's barely noticeable. I would say this is very playable at 60 FPS. Uh, I will try uh, later on Ultra. 
but I can already tell that uh, an ultra is gonna have a little bit of a harder time just because we are already pushing it quite a lot so we are sitting at uh, 21 watts uh, which uh, tells me that on ultra it's going to have a harder time so we might see frame rates uh, frame rates below uh, 60. Anyway, uh, on medium, this looks great and it is very playable. As we can see, we're getting into combat and the game works perfectly, no frame drops. Um, so yeah, I think it just takes a little while to stabilize because we have been playing for uh, like the last two minutes. Uh, we haven't seen any single frame drop, so that's really nice to see. I wish I could see this game just like running without any... Um, restrictions on the FPS so we can take advantage of that 90 hertz screen but this is this will do this will perfectly do and 60 FPS is very playable so I'm not complaining I'm not complaining at all this plays great and it's great to be able to play this game on the go because I, I do think that this is like one of the best games to play on the go on the on the Steam Deck because it's not competitive, it's very controller friendly, um, and it's free, so you get you get that extra bonus, right? Uh, all right, enough of that. Let's try on Ultra now. Render resolution, visual effects set to high, everything to the maximum, and I'm just gonna disable motion blur. All right. So this is running at the absolute maximum that this game can possibly run uh, at 800 feet, of course. But it's still looking, looking pretty good. Uh, let's try to get into some combat and see if it drops. Very few frame drops, so like you can tell that it's uh, consuming more battery than uh, medium settings. And just for stability's sake, I'll probably keep this on uh, medium settings because I don't think the difference is that high. So yeah, I mean we are consuming the maximum of amount of wattage that we can consume, so we can keep that in mind. We should keep that in mind. However, what we could do, and I will have a video linked right in the corner there. Uh, where you will be able to overclock your Steam Deck, okay? So I'm gonna push this to 20 watts and see if it makes a difference with these ultra settings. All right, so now uh, the Steam Deck is overclocked. So uh, let's see if we can find some enemies to fight and see if the wattage uh, holds up. So as you can see, we are already consuming more than we were before uh, the overclock, obviously. Uh, we are sitting at around 26 watts. It's not a huge difference, and the 20 watts do give it a lot of uh, room to work with. So I think this is um, one of the very few scenarios, actually, uh, that you can take advantage of that uh, overclocking to get that very stable 60 FPS on uh, high settings, right? So let's get into some combat, and obviously the uh, consumption is going to increase. So we're sitting at uh, close to 27, and we're still not dropping. So that's, that's very good news, and yeah. Just finish killing these guys, and then uh, we can probably talk about the conclusions. All right. So, uh, let's talk about conclusions now. While the game is perfectly playable on the lowest settings, and you are going to be capable of getting a lot of battery life out of that, 
this is a game that you need to be uh, connected to the inter internet for. So I am assuming that if you're connected to the internet, you are near a power outlet. So uh, places like a plane, you're not going to be able to play this game because it's online. Places like, uh, I don't know, a bus, you might have a harder time. You can connect using the, your uh, mobile hotspot, but it's going to be spotty. Uh, so in general, I assume that if you are playing this game, you are going to be near a power outlet. What does that mean? And why is that relevant? Because if you are, if you're not constrained battery life, then it doesn't make sense to run this at low settings, right? So by pushing it to ultra, the game is just going to look gorgeous. So look at that. That's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, by doing the overclock, obviously we are having uh, more headroom. So if I were you and I was running this on stock settings on a stock Steam Deck, I would run this game on medium settings because medium settings do, does look good. Obviously not as good as high settings, but uh, it still looks good. But if I was running this game on an overclocked Steam Deck, I would push this to a higher wattage and then I would run this game on high settings because the difference is noticeable. Anyway, to sum up, Genshin Impact, totally playable on the Steam Deck, on Steam OS. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm generally interested to know if you're gonna play this game on the Steam Deck and at what settings. Thank you so much for watching and catch you again in the next one.